Hello, my children. This is Santosh, Santosh Tavasko. Okay. And I am today with a new kind of topic, which uh, I am just going to show you. This is 12 mistakes we often make in our sentences. Yani wo baare prakar ki galtiyan jo hum apne sentences mein aksar karte rehte hain. Okay. This is the ASO of uh, spoken English. And if you are going to speak correctly, then you will have to understand, you will have to know these sentences, how you are going to speak them. Okay. Let's say the first sentence we often use in an incorrect manner. The first sentence is here. I am belong to Prayagraj. Okay. Never write like this. Don't use this. This is wrong. I am belong to Prayagras can never be written. You will have to write I belong to Prayagras. What? I belong to Prayagras. This sentence. I belong to Prayagras. And there are a number of students who write or speak like this. I belongs to Prayagras. This is also incorrect. You will have to write only I belong to Prayagras. He belongs to Prayagras. They belong to Prayagras. We belong to Prayagras. Ram and Rahim belong to Prayagras. But Ram belongs to Prayagras. It means never use am. What is the reason you are using am here? You are taking the first form of the verb. Then how can you use am here? And just keep it in your mind. You cannot use I am belonging to Prayagra because belong can never be used with ing. As an action verb, you can never use with ing. So I belong to Prayagra. Okay. Let's see the next sentence. This is the next sentence. Again, there are number of students, number of boys who use I am agree with you. When you chat with someone, you always write or often you write, I am agree with you. Again, remove am. Because agree is here, not going to be used with is am are here. And again, I can tell you, I am agreeing with you. You cannot write like this. So use the I agree with you. He agrees with you, they agree with you, she agrees with you. Okay, so write like this I agree. Never use I am angry. You often make like this. Next, let's see next sentence. This is the third sentence. I am giving my exam show. My children, you must know. That if you are a student, you do not give your exams, you take your exams. But if there is a teacher, he does not take exams, he gives his exams. So if you are a student, don't use I am giving. You are taking. But keep it in your mind, if someone is a teacher, he does not give he does not take his exams, he gives his exams, okay? A teacher gives his exams and a student takes his exams or appears in his exams, okay? Let's see next sentence, fourth sentence. We often write or speak in correct manner. What is time in your watch? If we want to ask time from someone, okay? Then we say like this or write like this. What is time in your watch? Don't use in my children. You will have to use by. Okay. What is time by your watch? But if you do not want to be informal, be formal. Say please time, time please like this. Okay. Or you can say hey. Then someone will certainly tell you the real time. Okay. So say here what is time by your watch not in your watch. Let's see the next sentence, fifth sentence before us. 
He has white hairs. उसके बाल सफेद हो गए हैं Don't say, first you cannot write like this hairs. Hair is an uncountable noun here. If hair is an uncountable noun, so how can you use hairs? You will have to use hair. And with hair, don't use white. You can use, but prefer gray. Okay? So you have, he has a gray hair. You have a gray hair. She has a gray hair. Okay? And don't use hairs. If you want to use hairs, you must see whether there is a numeral used or not. Means if he has two gray hairs, this is right. Because you have used two. Two. T W O. Okay? Let's see the next sentence. This is the sixth sentence. I don't follow any foundation. Often we use this sentence or we use this word. Okay? But you must know that in standard English, there is no word foundation, though there is the word boundary. Okay? In standard English, there is no word foundation, there is the word boundary. But if you want, if you want to show physical form, don't show foundation. But if you do not want to show your physical form, then you can use a foundation like a time foundation. Time cannot be seen, it is amorphous, so you can use time foundation. But if there is something physical form, like uh, there is uh, a foundation in Santosh Coaching Institute or Super Secretary, don't say foundation. There is a restriction, restriction or limitation or prohibition or boundary, but don't use a foundation in this manner. It is true that in scientific jargon, you can use a foundation. Scientific jargon, in scientific language, but in standard English, don't use a foundation, use a boundary, restriction, limitation or prohibition in accordance with the condition. Okay? Let's see the next sentence. Yeah, this is the thing I have just explained you with the help of nature. You can see here and you can also see here this example is. You must see with the help of your experience also how you can use a foundation when there is no physical form. Okay, let's proceed. This is the seventh sentence. My father is an English teacher. This is the right sentence. If you are English, if you are an English, so this is right sentence. But if you are an Indian, if you are an Indian, you cannot be an an English teacher, you are what? You are a teacher of English. You are a teacher of English, but you are not an English teacher if you live in India. Okay, let's proceed. This is your sentence. Okay, now you can see. I love you too, or I miss you too. There are a number of teachers who say that these are wrong sentences. The sentences are not wrong. Actually, at the time, the meaning may be wrong. If there is a person, just imagine, this is a person, and there is a person. And uh, he says something to him. I love you. Okay. And now the first one is uh, giving his response. So he says, uh, I love you too. I love you too. It means this too. It means what? He already loves someone else. He already someone else. So now he is going to or he loves uh, him or her uh, too. It means there are two persons. This is the thing that is wrong. Okay. So you have to understand if there, if there are two persons only and one is saying, I love you too. This is wrong. You will have to use this too. Here. I too love you. Or I too. This is too. 
Okay, here, here. I too miss you. But if you want to say that you love this one and you love that one, okay? Then you can say, I love you too. Because you have already loved someone else, okay? So try to understand, I too love you or I too miss you. But if you want to say that there are two persons, then this is justified because you are loving this one, you are loving that one. So, try to understand. This is the ninth sentence. I am understanding it. In tense format, you can never use understanding. As a noun, you can use understanding. Understanding means samaj. Kisi ki, jo samaj hoti hai, aap si, wo understanding hoti hai. Uh, like you can say, uh, there is a good understanding between the two brothers, between or uh, among the five brothers, okay? But if you are using as a verb, if you are using as a verb, then this is wrong. So I am understanding it wrong. There are a number of options, maybe, but what you can write? I understand it. Or, if you want to write like this, I am getting it. So if someone asks you, or, or do you understand? Here, I am getting it, or I understand it. Okay, next sentence. This is the 10th sentence. He is good in English. If someone is good in English, it is incorrect. But if someone is good at something, this is correct. So you have you will have to remember good in something. No, you will have to use the at. He is good at English. He is good at mathematics. Okay, I have just explained this to for. This is. Take the screenshot and try to understand that uh, she is at home in English, maybe. I am well versed in English, maybe. Their English or their knowledge about of English is good. This you can write. But don't say he is good at English or he is uh, good at uh, mathematics. This is like Never say he is good in English or he is good in mathematics. Say he is good at English and he is good at mathematics. Okay, this is the sentence we'll have to see 11 sentence. Thank you. There are number of students uh, who want to thank me and say thanks to you, sir. No, you will have to use. Uh, Thank you. Don't say thank you. Thank you. And if you are using it alone, other aap you say akeli use kar hai hai, don't say thank you. Use thanks. Okay? Thank you or thanks. One of the two. And this is the last sentence. I am eating food. No, 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 no. You are not eating food. You are taking or having your lunch. You are taking or having your dinner. So this kind of structure is perhaps not good. May not be wrong. Maybe it is not wrong. But just use like this. I am having my lunch. Or I am having my dinner. Okay? If you want to substitute this, you can use uh, taking. So I am taking my lunch. I am taking my dinner. Okay? These are the 12 sentences, my children, which uh, you can use uh, in a correct manner. If you see all these sentences uh, and uh, keep it in your mind uh, which part has an end. Okay? So improve it to correct it and then speak or write in an in a correct man. Okay. Thank you for watching this video.